In this video, we're going to be talking about the three things you should not do when looking and researching for your Amazon product. Welcome to the channel. Those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Bashar Khatun. I'm the founder of BJK University, an education company with a mission to impact 1 million lives. So one thing after coaching over 4,000 students and simply helping, you know, tens of thousands around the world sell on Amazon and to, you know, many of which have gone on to becoming five, six and seven figure earners. I've realized that, you know, there are three things that many people do when they come to researching their products. And those things can really make or break their product and their success on Amazon. So in this video, I wanna talk about those uh, with Lorraine and share with you guys our insight on what those three things are. So Lorraine, welcome again to another video here. Um, why don't we go ahead and dive right into the three things that you believe that someone should not uh, do when product researching for their product? Absolutely. The first thing we wanna make sure that we don't, we don't do is get stuck on a niche. Like keep yourself open to everything. Uh, some people are just like, well, I just wanna sell, sell kitchen stuff. And it's a, it is a, a hard niche, but there's tons of products you can get. But we tend to see things around our kitchen and we wanna look at those. But if you, we see it around our kitchen, everybody else has it too, which means there's tons of people selling it. And you wanna get into it, we wanna find a product that yes, people are using it, but you know, not a lot of people are selling it quite yet. And if you get in there first, even if they're coming behind you, you're still gonna stay up above of the curve. So opening yourself up to kitchen, outdoor, sports and recreation, you know, all the different niches that are out there, we're looking for product. We're not trying to narrow ourselves into and lock ourselves into a room of something. We wanna keep that door wide open because there are a ton of products. Like if, if I say, um, I, I even told somebody, it's like, yeah, but I don't wanna sell that. I'm like, it's not about what you wanna sell. It's about what somebody else wants to sell. And I told them, I said, I'll sell a jock strap and a puppy diaper if it'll get me money. I don't care if the numbers look good, I'm gonna sell it. So right. don't close the door on yourself, open it up. Yeah, you know, uh, when you said, uh, don't look at your around your house, I, I used to always have a saying, when you're trying to sell a product, don't look around your house for product ideas. Uh, because literally everyone else probably did the same thing, you know? Um, I used to get a bunch of people just saying, hey, can I sell this, can I sell that? And I'm like, yeah, you can sell whatever you want. But it's like, there are like 200,000 other, you know, sellers selling the same exact thing. And literally maybe like 70, I wanna say between 60 to 80% of products that I've ever sold on Amazon, I didn't even know existed, you know? And and like half of those, when I saw them, I'm like, what the hell, people buy this? And then I looked at the numbers and I'm like, yeah, I guess they do, you know? Let's sell it. <laughs> yep, that's right. So, so that's the first thing is don't get stuck with one category, with one niche. You know, I wanna sell everything in the, home and kitchen and the outdoor and the, you know, this or that. What's the second thing? Okay, the second thing is don't get emotional on a product. Mm. I, I've seen people get so emotional on it and it's just like, well, I wanna sell a baby bassinet. I really like baby bassinets. All my friends are using them. I have pregnant friends and it's like, don't get emotional on a product. Now you're mm. gonna look, you're gonna analyze the product and find out 200,000 people are selling a baby bassinet. You know, and, and how are you going to get in there? And the reviews are super high and maybe there's a lot of negativity on things. Mm. So if you get stuck on a product, you're not going to have any room to move. You need to, again, like I said, open the door up. It's not about the, what you want. It's about what the public wants. And it's about what I can sell and how I can get my foot in the door within my criteria that I set. And once you set a criteria, you stick by it. Don't sell things that are around, you know, like I said, the things that are around your house, everybody's thought of that too, because it's right in front of our face. One of my favorite things to do is if you spot something around your house, such as, you know, my flask or whatever, what you want to do is go into Helium 10 Magnet and make, get the longest keyword you can think of. Right. Okay. And just purple plum flask for hiking and whatever you want to do just make it really long and then go search right amazon's gonna and uh it's just like amazon's algorithm how it moves things around well it does the same thing with helium 10. so what's going to end up happening is yeah you'll find a plum uh flask in there but now it's mixing and matching saying what the heck well let me just throw a bunch of stuff at her and it does and my favorite thing to do is when i look through the list and say huh what the heck is that i love that 
Mm. I have found products left and right doing that. What the heck is that? And I'll go click on it and, and I'll find out it's just another way of describing a, a wooden cutting board, but everybody's typing it in. And I'm like, well, over here, wooden cutting board is like 200,000 people are selling it. The nick is, niche is thick, but over here, I've got 122 people selling it, and my search volume is good, but the, the revenues are amazing. I'm like, wow, <laughs> this is pretty cool. And the graft is like steady. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. Hey, I'll go sell it. It's on my list. I, did, awesome. I found that out just recently with a thing called a noodle board. I'm like, what the heck is a noodle board? <laughs> <laughs> Turned out to be a wooden board that people are cutting cheese on. I'm like, that's I don't see any noodles anywhere. <laughs> so that's that's actually a great point that we ended up here because this takes us into our next point of of the you know the third thing of what not to do when when researching your product. But before we do that, those of you that are new to the channel, this is your first time. Do me a favor and smash the thumbs up button. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. And let us know in the comment section if you have any questions or if there are specific topics you want us to talk about, about Amazon or other topics that you are interested in. And also if you hang out with us for just a couple more minutes, I have an announcement for you that I wanna make at the end. I think you'll you'll really enjoy and find it valuable. But with that, uh, with that said, Lorraine, what is the third thing that someone researching a, for a product should not do? They should not go for the max search volume. Mm. What does <laughs> that mean? Have, they have a misconception of how this works. Okay, so if I see there's a million people searching for this under this keyword, yeah. it's like, wow, I can get a million people to search for it. It's like, yeah, if there's a million people searching under this, now look how big your competition is. Yeah. It's like 500,000 people are selling it. And when you get there, remember you're starting off at zero. You're on the bottom of the list when your product gets there. You have to work to get up the list to get to page one, right. where these guys have been there for years, okay? Good luck. So this is why we keep our search volume low. We wanna hit in the criteria of five to 20,000 searches a month. And then we look how many reviews they're having. What's the revenues? Ooh, the revenues. These, these guys are making hundreds of thousands of dollars in there. They're smart. Right. They're starting out right here. And then they're scaling up little by little by little. And each time in each category, they're still in each category at the same time. Right. They're getting more and more sales. So right. that's why we do the scale system. We scale up because you can't start off at the top. It just doesn't work. Not unless you own Amazon. Yeah, absolutely. So as, as Lorraine said, you want to make sure that your top search volume or top keyword search volume is not above 20,000, but you also don't wanna probably go below 5,000. I think three, 4,000 is okay as well, but you don't wanna go anything below that. But we, we like to say between 5,000 to 20,000 monthly search volume is how much your keyword should have. So those are kind of the three things. Just to recap is number one, you want to make sure that um, you, know, you don't get attached to a category. Number two, you don't want to get attached to a product. Number three, you don't want to. And you know, actually, before I, I kind of end this, I wanted to mention this, Lorraine, because I've seen sometimes students um, in our community say, well, I'm passionate about this product. You know, like this product I've been trying to sell on Shopify or I've been trying to do this, but I want to now launch it on it. It's kind of like almost like their invention or something that they created. What would someone like that do? Now, before you tell me about that, I just want to give you guys this announcement. Um, if you have a product that you want to sell on Amazon, or if you don't have a product and you just want to start, find a product because, you, because you're lost, you're like, well, I don't know what to sell and want someone to show you how to select the right product or how to launch your own product on Amazon successfully. Below this video, there's a link. You can click on it and you can go on a one-on-one -on -one free call with our enrollment coaches to see how BJK University can help you. So click on that link to see how we can help you. But Lorraine, what would someone do in this case? They've got a product they're passionate about. They've got a product that it's kind of like their invention they feel like. What would, what, what would you do? A lot of people have products and they treat it like it's their baby, hmm. okay? And they just don't wanna let it go for anything. The thing is, we need to analyze it. You still go, it doesn't matter if you sold it here or the other way, or if you really love it, go buy it. You know, this is about selling it on the Amazon platform. Is it a viable 
keyword? Is it a viable product that you can sell? Everything is, you can sell anything, but right. if, you have to remain loyal to the numbers. If you type this in, we can help you find keywords and maybe make it viable. But if you use the, the main keyword, like right. baby bassinet, maybe it's baby bassinet for baby boy. And what happens if that's a great keyword and you can sell it? Okay, but we'll teach you how to find the keywords to make it viable, but you have to do the research first. If it's not, then it would not be profitable to sell. And we would let you know, because in the beginning, when you do find something and you put it in, in into uh, Amazon and we'll do an X-ray on it and take a look at it, you'll post it and your coaches will see it. So we'll go over the numbers and we'll tell you what looks good, what doesn't look good, and whether or not to move forward with an in-depth analysis, which is, you know, going ahead and doing patent search and looking at reviews, you know, really taking a good look at it. But before that, we want to make sure that you have an open pathway to sell. And if you don't, we'll try to skew you towards, let's try to find another keyword. If that doesn't work, it is not viable and we will not recommend it. So Absolutely. before you waste any money, we will let you know we do not recommend this. That's right. Absolutely. And 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 um, if you if you do en enroll in BJK University, you're going to see Lorraine. You know she's going to be doing the onboarding orientation. She's going to be uh, all over you, making sure that you take <laughs> the right you know you make the right decisions and you take the right moves. But outside of that, guys, just a quick recap. First thing, three things that you don't want to do when you're first researching for your product. You don't want to be too sold or just get stuck to one niche. You don't want to be too emotional about a product. And the third thing is. And that's the search volume. And I don't right. think any of us coaches have our first product. Right. I don't know. None of us have our first product we sold. We've moved on since then. Right. You know, if it was still selling really, really good and I was able to scale it higher, <laughs> I'd be locking that puppy in. But we move on and we get, we get, as we go, we get better. And certain products, we just let them go. Yep. Absolutely. Well, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, smash the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel. Let us know in the comment section what other videos you'd like to see from us on this channel. If you want BJKU to help you get started on Amazon, click that link below this video. Outside of that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Take care.